Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, family. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming on. We certainly appreciate you guys. We love you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, we are grateful, grateful, grateful for this day, for all of God's many blessings. God bless you, Leah. Um, God bless you, my Bianca. Blessings to you as you come on. Please share. Um, invite some people. Invite some followers. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us even on today during our service at 11 o'clock um, yesterday morning. We had an awesome, awesome time um, of worship and um, just words of encouragement um, as my husband began to teach and to empower and equip um, you guys. So thank you so much. Many of you have viewed the broadcast and many of you shared and we certainly appreciate that. Um, we've got a lot of feedback from that message and from the worship. And uh, so we're excited. We're certainly excited about um, what God is doing. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Welcome. Yes, good morning. Good evening, someone. It may be evening where they are. Good morning. Yes, prayer changes things. Good morning. Good morning to you. Um, Dawn of Nerera, I think it is. God bless you. Uh, Thomasina from Savannah, Orlando. Yes. I pray everything is going well there in Orlando. I know some people are without power, and so we're certainly praying for um, a speedy uh, recovery of uh, electrical power and uh, resources that uh, people need. So we are excited about, again, what God is doing, regardless of what we see. We still know that God is in control. We still know that he's the God of restoration. We still know that he's still a healer. He's able to heal um, our land. He's able to heal our hearts. He's able to heal our bodies and our minds. And so we look to him who is the author and the finisher of our faith. He never said that we would not have to go through trials or um, that we would never face a storm. That is never stated in the word of God. But what it is stated is that God will deliver us out of all of our troubles that the trying of our faith worketh patience, and patience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed. And uh, so we have this assurance that God is with us and that our faith is, is, is working something greater for us. And uh, we will not be ashamed. God will not allow us to be ashamed and uh, so we can continue to put our hope and trust in him. Amen. I just saw somebody's comment. They said the forecasters cannot explain what happened <laughs> but uh, but uh, there was a change, and uh, somebody posted something and tagged us in it earlier, where they were saying that they knew that um, you know God had done something, uh, God was doing something, and, and it, I wish I could show you outside. I wish that mm -hmm. I didn't have these uh, cameras mounted on um, stands so I could actually take it outside and show you guys. But I really believe that uh, it is, uh, it's amazing what God is doing and really excited about what God is doing. And uh, everything that he does is perfect. Everything that he does is, uh, is amazing. So in a moment, we're going to pray. We're going to believe God. Uh, as my wife said, we had a great time uh, from this morning. Yes. Uh, amazing time. Many of you shared the video. We appreciate you for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I am, uh, we are, I am a little bit tired. <laughs> uh, I was laughing, so I'll tell you all a joke. Uh, my wife loves to cook, but the problem is we're never home, and so uh, the storm gave us an opportunity to be home so that she can cook, and she's been cooking all day. She cooked breakfast, she cooked lunch, she cooked dinner, she cooked dinner for tomorrow. I mean, this girl has yeah. been cooking, and yes. she just loves to cook, and so I told some of my family, I said, y'all come down for Thanksgiving because she's ready to cook again, mm -hmm. and uh, so I'm excited. Well, listen, um, I want to kind of know where people are from and what they have going on in the areas where they are. Uh, I wonder if Moses Nelson is on here. I know that he lives in the Fort Lauderdale mm -hmm. uh, area. And so I'm trying to see what people, where people are. Texas, Oregon, Arkansas, okay. Colorado, New Jersey. Um, yes, yes, thank you so much. Georgia, North, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, Medford, Oregon. Wow, God bless you. Thank you for joining us, South Carolina. Houston, Trinidad, God bless you. Suddenly Value, uh, Philadelphia, Louisiana. 
um, Dallas. Um, she's here in Tampa with her family, Cali, Chicago, um, Plano, Texas, Douglasville, Georgia, Madison, Illinois, Winston, Oregon, um, different ones, New York, Atlanta, uh, Evansville, Indiana, um, Atlanta, God bless you, uh, Burleson, Texas, Maryland, Montgomery, Alabama, um, Omaha, Nebraska, Mobile, Alabama, Queens, New York, um, Atlanta, yes, so many different places that are represented. And this is proof that when we come together on one accord, things change. When we lift up the name of Jesus, when we come with the same heart, with the same mind, with the same focus, all saying the same thing, believing God for the same thing, then he moves, God moves, and we can see the tangible evidence of all of our prayers coming together um, and making a difference. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. God bless you. All right. I'm just looking at Fox Lake, Illinois, Week, Illinois, Los Angeles. Wow, you guys are from everywhere. Yes. Well, we're going to pray. The caption says that the storm is over, and uh, our, or the storm is passing over. Yes. And, uh, and I really believe that. I really believe that God is causing uh, the storms to pass over. That, uh, you know, when I looked at the, uh, the storm a few moments ago, I was looking at the actual radar, and it was telling us that it was indeed uh, passing over. And the interesting thing was, it did not come to Tampa Bay as it was in, uh, they said that it was. Right. And so it seemed like it like left Naples and it kind of went uh, north uh, east, um, yeah, northeast, and it's like going straight up towards Orlando, I'm guessing. And so um, we're going to continue to pray because we want everybody to be okay, and we want everybody to be uh, to be safe. Amen. And so really believe that God is uh, is doing some amazing things, and, and uh, so I'm excited. I am excited. I am excited. I'm excited. We're going to pray, and uh, I'm going to see if my wife. Now tell us about your webinar. Uh, because I see people are still registering for it, and um, I'm really excited about that. Let me see if I can play uh, the video. Let's see if the sound. Really, really going. excited about um, this upcoming webinar that will start um, on the 14th. And, um, you know, <laughs> as many of you have asked me to um, do something on prayer, um, my husband, of course, said that I would, and then God really began to prompt us, and he began to really, um, really download some things um, inside of me as, as well as my husband, and so we will, you know, my, I know my picture's on there, my husband said, yeah, you're going to do this, but, you know, we always work together um, as a team, as one, um, so he'll be sharing as well, along with myself, but it's just been amazing, um, the things that that God has op even opened my understanding to and begin to download to me so that I can download to you and to um, equip and empower you as well. So we're really, really excited about um, this upcoming webinar. If you can it's, answer uh, yes to any of these questions, the Bold Prayer Warrior and Fearless Intercessor webinar is just for you. This interactive webinar is designed to equip you to pray boldly, intercede fearlessly, and break through every time. I am so excited for this opportunity to pour into you over 30 years of wisdom, experience, and practical application over the next four weeks. For more information on times and dates, go now to our website, www.lejeanandlamora.com. asking about the pricing and there's a couple different pricing according to um, if you're going to do just a webinar or the webinar along with the prayer and study guide you can certainly get that information from our website www.lejeanandvalora.com and um, it will certainly be a blessing it's just a very small investment um, into you going to a new place in God in prayer as well as intercession and I really believe that God is calling us back to, to a intimate, um, an intimacy through prayer with him because God wants to reveal his heart to us. He wants us to begin to pray um, from his heart so that we can see 
breakthrough every single time. And uh, one of the things that um, we're certainly going to be praying for, of course, the different families that have been affected, but we want to pray to see, God, what is our assignment in this situation? What has God called us to do um, as a prophetic voice, as a prayer warrior, as an intercessor? What has God called us to do in this situation? As we've been seeing, um, you know, the hurricane in Houston, the hurricane here in Florida, and the other islands, God is God is wanting to manifest himself and he's going to do it through us. And so we need to know what our assignment is in this very hour. It's a very critical time. Many people have lost pretty much everything. Um, some people have lost other things. So we've got to know, God, what is our assignment and what have you called us to do so that you can be glorified? That's good. Somebody uh, complimented you on your uh, speaking voice. They said you oh. have a phenomenal speaking voice. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, yeah, she you know, uh, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful now, and I can say that now, but for years I was silent. For years I allowed fear to silence me. Um, I was afraid because of the things that I had gone through in life, the, the verbal abuse as a child, the bullying as a child growing up. I was very silent. And so God has um, given me my voice and um, he has released me to speak. And so for years, I was just very, very silent. I never wanted to talk. I never wanted to be in front of people. I never, you know, desired that, never wanted to speak, definitely didn't want to preach. So, but God called me, God called me and I had to allow God to transform me. I had to allow him to heal me of those different things to acknowledge what what was what I was really dealing with so that he could come in and heal me and deliver me and set me free. And so when he set me free, he set my voice free. Now for Tamara Robinson and others who asked about the prayer guide, uh, workbook for the webinar uh, that should be coming out this week. They should get it this yes. week. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you'll get There's it been, week. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you a, um, tomorrow you will receive an email with an update as reference to the, um, the prayer book, the study guide, as well as the information for Canvas. So you'll be receiving a email um, on tomorrow with all of that information. Amen. You know, I'm always uh, uh, impressed and excited about her. Uh, <laughs> My husband really pushes me. He really does. He pushes me. And there are times when I don't, you know, I don't feel like I have, you know, certain things inside of me or this, that, and the other. I never thought that I would be able to really write a book. And, um, you know, my husband has really pushed me. He's like, Lord, it's inside of you. I remember, I just want to share this really quickly because I really believe it's going to help someone. Um, during um, my fearless conference last year, around this time, and I was getting ready and God had laid on my heart to do a fearless journal. And, uh, and so I, you know, for me, writing is not something that comes easily. You know, I have to kind of work at it and I have to, of course, rely on the Holy Spirit to give me um, the wisdom and the grace in order to do it. And so I said, you know, you know, God has really given him that gift. I mean, he could write a 10 page paper in like two hours. But I kept saying, you know, are you going to help me? Are you going to help me? He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, you know, just write down some things. Just, you know, what do you want to do? And what do you want to say? And so on and so forth. And I, and I was like, oh, okay. So he kept saying he was going to help me. Yeah, I'm going to help you. Just, you know, go ahead and, you know, I'll look over everything. So lo and behold, my husband, he was like, you know, I think you've got it. I'm, I'm pretty sure you're doing really, really good. Keep going, keep going. And so he really pushed me to birth. Um, and, and sometimes that's what we need. We need people to help us to birth. And, um, and that's why we're pushed to do the Midnight Cries. We're pushed to continue to do the midday um, broadcast because there are some of you that are ready to birth and you don't have anybody to help you to birth. And so the words and the messages, we hope are encouragement to you to help you to birth, to help you um, to move forward. Sometimes it feels like we're stuck 
in a place. And, and so sometimes one word, one word can cause us to shift. One word can cause us to be dislodged so that we can move forward. Um, sometimes we feel like we may be in quicksand and we need someone to pick us up out of that place. And, um, and so God has called us even in this hour, in this season, we thought it was going to be for 21 days in January and we're still here nine months later. Mm -hmm. um, encouraging, equipping, and empowering as, um, you know, as part of what God has given to us. And we just want to be a blessing to you. We understand trouble. We understand trials. We understand when people walk away. We understand when it's like you've been put in a place and all hope seems to be gone. We understand those situations, those circumstances. We understand storms, not just in a category five hurricane. We understand storms of life. And so because we know that God is faithful, because we know that God did not leave us, he did not forsake us. And that's why we're here today. That's why God brought him all the way from Memphis to preach one message. He sent me back to the same church on the same day that he was coming. And I had not been to that church in over 30 years as a little girl. He sent me there that day. He sent him here in there that day. We met that day. Two months later, we got married because purpose united us. Purpose called us. Purpose called him and purpose called me and we met together and there was destiny. Wow. Girl, you tell the story. <laughs> anyway, I, some of y'all, I will tell my side of the story. Uh, I have a little bit more uh, a hilarious side yes. of it. But uh, we want to pray tonight. We love you guys. We thank God for you. Really believe in uh, what God is doing in your life. Really believe that, uh, you know, one of the things we talked about today was we wouldn't fret, we wouldn't fear, we wouldn't faint. Uh, and then not only that, so we're not gonna fret because it looks as if though uh, the storm is brewing. Uh, I remember David said, do not fret yourself because of evil doers because they'll soon be cut off like the grass. Yes. And so sometimes uh, our, our enemy is again, always as I said, it's not always people, but sometimes we have enemies in life. This storm was an enemy, it was a threat. Uh, but we declared that God was going to rescue us, that God was going to be a refuge. We went through each one of those scriptures last night. And when God, when we declare the word of God, God will do just what we say. Absolutely. So that's why we could say tonight that the storm was passing over. Passing over. And so the, the storm is passing by and it's passing over. And yes. it has diminished from the place that it was when it was when we were here last night. Right. Last night it was a category five. I think in a moment it'll be a category one. I think it's a two now. Mm -hmm. But it's gone down and it's diminished and it's it's dissipated. Mm -hmm. So we believe that God has the ability to yes. hear God hears our prayers and yes. hears what we're asking. And he it God knows. God knows your assignment, He knows your purpose. Mm -hmm. Even when we looked at as a matter of fact, let, let me show you this. I want to show you this before we pray. because uh, I always I love teaching. I, teaching is at my heart and, yes. and biblical exegesis is uh, is something I love to do. But he, here is here is what happens. I want you to turn your Bibles very quickly to Mark chapter 4. When we look at Mark chapter 4, uh, and we look down at verse 35, it's, let me see if I can find it. Um, let me see if I can go here. And let's see if we can go, Blue Letter Bible. Let's go to Mark, and let's see if we can find it. I love to show you the scripture. <laughs> I want to show you yes. this very quickly. We're going to pray. Mark chapter 4, okay? Let's go there. All right, no, that wasn't it. Let's go. Passage is Mark chapter four. Go, here we go. Okay, let's go down to verse 35 and uh, you guys can see the scripture with us. I love when you can see the scripture with me. Verse 35, okay? And the same day when the evening was come, said unto let us pass over to the other side. You can see that, okay, 36. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship and there was also with him other little ships and there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat in the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on the pillow. And they awakened him and said to him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? He arose, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wave and the sea obey him? Mm -hmm. Now I want to look very quickly, and I want to look at the next chapter. Now, 
Here we go, chapter five. This is why the enemy cannot take you out until you have finished your assignment. I want yes. you to catch me on this because Mark chapter five, it says, and they came on the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately, there goes that word suddenly again, immediately, suddenly, straightway, there met him a man out of the tombs with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him, no not with chains because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, Whatever I have to do with thee, so Jesus, thou son of the most high God, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. And so we find that this scripture comes uh, uh, um, just right after the scenario where they thought they were going to perish. The reason why they couldn't perish is because on the other side, Jesus says, we're going to the other side, yes. but you can never perish before your assignment is over, before you're finished doing what God has called for you to do. Amen? Amen. And so if you will understand that, if you will get this in your spirit and know that you can't, that this storm cannot take you out, it's not authorized to take you out, it does not have the authority to take you out. Let, let me tell you something. God has the ability to call storms to cease in your life because he just wants to see whether or not you're going to trust him. Mm -hmm. Come on. He, he told him, he said, man, did you, I mean, he back there sleep. Mm -hmm. So Jesus sleep, man. I'm really in the point where I'm going to go to sleep too. Uh, that's where I'm at now in my life. And so let me, uh, let me, uh, as a matter of fact here, verse 15, it says, and they came to Jesus to see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid, afraid. And they said, it told to them, it befell him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of the coast. Okay. And when he had come into the ship, he, had, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. And so Jesus said, no, go tell your friends. Then in verse 21, and Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side. Much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue. This goes back into, see, Jesus has to go to the other side, deal with the man that has the legion of demons, and then he comes back from that side, back over to the other side. Does that, mm -hmm. are you following me? Right. Yes. So I, I got to get, I got to get over there so I can do what I need to do there. Mm -hmm. And this little intermediate mm -hmm. process is not going to stop me from doing what my assignment is. Yes. And so I went from there over here, got dealt with the man that had the legion of demons because this story needs to be written in the, in the text 2000 years from now. And then, so, so after that, then he comes back over to the other side. When he comes out of the ship, all of a sudden Jairus meets him. And so he didn't have time for the storm to take him out then because the man with the legion needed him and Jairus needed him Come on. and also the woman with the issue of blood. blood. Yes, yes. So Absolutely. there are people that are waiting on you to My fulfill God. your assignment. There are yes. people that are waiting on you to fulfill your destiny. And so God, the, the enemy, cannot, God cannot allow your enemies to take you out, the storms of life to take you out, because guess what? You, there, is a, there is still yet work for you to do. Yes. I remember, do you remember when Elijah was up on the mountain? He had just got through fighting with the prophets of Baal. Yes. He went into the cave, and there are some of you who are weary, who are in caves right now, because you believe that your enemy has been given authority to take you out. And so here you are, but then he brings him down. He says, I want you to anoint this one to do this. I want you to anoint that one to do that. And I want you to anoint Elisha to take, to, take the, 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 you know, to be the prophet in your stead. You are not going to die here. Jezebel cannot kill you. She is not authorized to kill you. David, David leaves the, leaves the city because he, because Absalom is after him. But God says, Absalom is not authorized to kill you. Jezebel's not authorized to kill you. Karaz are not authorized to kill you. Absalom's are not authorized to kill you. Euryclides are not authorized to kill you. Storms are not authorized to kill you. Nothing is authorized to kill you until you have finished your assignment. Amen? And so the storm is passing now. You got to know that. You got to get that in your spirit. Yes. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. Nothing is authorized. No weapon formed My against God. you can prosper. It's not Jesus. authorized. It's Jesus. only authorized to Jesus. usher you into the place that you're called Jesus. to be. 
and help you get to your next place of destiny. I'm telling you, nothing can stop you. Nothing can hold you up. Nothing can hinder you. Everything is on assignment to bring you into the next level of your destiny. That boat has got to get you to the other side. I don't care how much water is in the boat. I don't care how the boat is rocking. I don't care how bad the storm looks. Brother, I'm telling you, sister, I'm telling you that God is going to take you to the other side. Yes. And not only is he going to take you to the other side, He after he gets through ministering to that brother, he gets back in the ship and goes back across the same lake and the same place that was stormy. It was just a test. It was just an opportunity to see for God to be able to show you who he really is in your life. Don't you dare get afraid because it looks like a storm is brewing and something looks like it's coming your way. No, hold on. Believe God. Trust God. Know that God is faithful. Know that he promised and know that if he promised you, he's going to do it. And he said he'd never leave you nor forsake you, that he's going to do just that. Come on, let's pray. Woo. Jesus. Absolutely. God wants to see our faith in the midst of the storm when it seems as though that Jesus is asleep in your life, that you don't hear from God, you don't, you, you, you know, there's not anything that, you know, you're just like, God, where are you? Where are you? And sometimes God seems like he is silent, but God wants to see your faith. Can you believe God when you can't trace God? Can you believe and stand firm on his word when you don't hear anything, when you don't see anything, when all hell is broken loose against you? Can you still have faith and believe God? And so, um, you know, even as I said before, we can say this because we've experienced, we've, we've seen it, we've, we, we've experienced these, these adverse situations and circumstances where we've had to believe God in the face of adversity. When we didn't see him, when we, we, we couldn't touch him and we couldn't feel him, we still had to believe God. And then it, as we look back, we can say, God was there all the time. All the time. He was there all the time. Yes, we're going to pray. We're going to stand on God's word. We're going to decree and declare God's word in the name of Jesus. And God's word is going to manifest in your life like never before in the name of Jesus. This is the time and the season that God is ushering you. He's sending you forth in the name of Jesus. He's causing you to prosper in every area of your life. He's causing wealth to come into your life like never before. God said, I'm, I'm raising you up to be a mouthpiece. I'm raising you up to be a voice. Glory to God. I, I am <coughs> my spirit on the inside of you. And my spirit is going to lead you and guide you into all truth. My spirit is going to comfort you. My spirit is going to be with you even until the ends of the earth. Glory to God. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit Spirit comes with power. The Holy Spirit comes with demonstration. The Holy Spirit comes with revelation. He's going to begin to reveal Christ unto you. He's going to begin to reveal the word of God unto you. And he's going to stir up the gifts that's on the inside of you. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the gift of faith, the gift of prophecy in the name of Jesus, the working of miracles. God, the Holy Spirit is going to begin to stir up those gifts on the inside of you in whatever situation you find yourself in. If you need the word of wisdom, it's going to manifest. If you need the gift of healing, it's going to manifest. This is the hour that God wants to use you. God wants to bring you into a place of prayer. He wants to bring you into a new place of intercession. He wants to take you into realms that you've never even imagined, that you didn't even know existed. But you're going to go into realms and you're going to be able to to bring healing and deliverance. You're going to be able to set the captives free. You're going to be able to heal the brokenhearted in the name of Jesus. The opening of the prison doors, the spirit of the Lord is going to be upon you like never before. But God had to bring you into a place that you trust him because you can't be moved by what you see. As an intercessor, as a prayer warrior, you cannot be moved by what you see. you got to, you got to have your eyes so sharp in the spirit. you got to have MRI vision. not and, and so it has to be so precise and so keen that you are not moved by any other thing but what God has said. And when you know what God has said, you got to hold on to that thing. You got to intercede for it. You got to stand. You got to travail with it in the name of Jesus. You got to sometimes weep for it. Sometimes you got to cry for it. Sometimes you got to wail for it. But it's got, it will come to pass. And you're going to get into a place that you're going to pray until heaven releases you. You're not going to 
come out of your prayer closet in five minutes. You're not going to come out of there in three hours. But God is bringing you to a deep place of revelation, a deep place that he's calling all of us to. It's not just you or not just me, but it's all of us. He's calling us in this hour to come forward, to come into a new place, into a new realm with him because he wants to reveal more of himself. He wants to do exceeding abundantly above what you can even ask a thing. God wants to show you some mystery. He wants to unveil some things to you. He wants to open up the eyes of your understanding that you will know what is the hope of his calling, what the exceeding greatness of his love is towards you. My God, he wants to show you what heaven is doing in the name of Jesus. And you can say, let it be on earth, even as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not, God, into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let me tell you, when you've been processed, there are certain things that you are not even moved by. When you've been processed, my God, certain temptations don't even, don't even move you. My God, when you've been processed, you know how to forgive. You know how to love people when they're unlovable. When you've been processed, when you've had to go through some things, when you've had gone through some hard trials and some hard tribulations, you understand grace. You understand mercy. You understand compassion. You understand that when people turn away, when they say all manner of evil against you, you can still pray for them. You can still intercede for them because you know that greater, that God has called you to greater, that you will not allow unforgiveness to hinder you. You will not allow certain things to move you because you know that you have a promise and that promise is coming to pass in Jesus name. So Father, we declare Lord God that yes. we'll get it in our minds and we'll know that God you're faithful who promised. Mm -hmm. We'll know uh, God that no matter what the wind and the wave and the challenge Jesus. and the storm comes against us God that there is nothing that's authorized to take us out Father until our time comes. God we won't go behind time we won't go before time but God we'll move in your perfect timing in your in your time in your perfect timing God in your Kairos timing God we'll yes. move in it and so Father we thank you Lord God that even in our minds God we don't even have to war and we don't have to fight against things God that you you've already had and you already have control over. Mm -hmm. Father you already know what the wind and the wave and the sea is going to do. Yes. God you already have a predetermined time and a predetermined assignment on its life oh God. It's, it's only to bring us into a certain place. Even your word declares that all things are working together for the good of them that love you and that are called according to your purpose. So Father yes. we think that even every storm God has a purpose. It has uh, it, but, but although it has a purpose we, we also know that it has a limitation. God that it has so, so far that it can go. Uh, it has so much that it can do. God it cannot go past what you've already pre-selected and pre-designated that it can do and where it can go. And so Father, we just thank you even as we're uh, on this scope, God, and there are different sons and daughters of yours who are upon this scope and some who are still in what they believe is harm's way. Father, we declare even the word over them that we spoke earlier, even if it's a natural storm, a, bi a, 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 a relational storm, if it's a legal storm, if no matter what kind of storm, if it's a, a health storm, God, if it's a financial storm, we declare now, even as your word declared, even as the apostle Paul said, God, number one, we do as Jesus said and we command the storm to peace be still, but then even as the Apostle Paul uh, did, oh God, he cried out to you. And when he cried out to you, you said that not one hair upon their head would be touched, God. And so we pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you would cover these, your people. God, that you would not allow the enemy, oh God, even to touch them, to take them out before their time. But yes, we understand that some things are here to try us, to try our faith, oh God, uh, so that tribulation worketh, uh, uh, worketh uh, uh, patience and patience experience and experience hope and hope maketh not ashamed, God. And so we stand believing you and trusting you, knowing that this light affliction, but uh, which is but for a moment, worketh a far way of uh, a, a far way of uh, a greater weight of glory. That you're yes. working something in us, God. It's building something in us. It's building a, a tenacity. It's building an experience, and it's building a power in us. It's building something down on the inside of us, so that when winds come, we'll be like that 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 building, God, that you built that can withstand the gale yes. force winds. God, you, you've placed yes. us in the places that you've allowed us to be. And God, you've anointed us to stand in those places. You've given us power. You've given us anointing. You've given us strength. You've given us wisdom. You've given us even strategy in how to be able to deal with the situations and storms of life. And Father, our declaration is, God, we'll come back a hundred times stronger. We'll yes. come back ten times, a hundred times, a thousand times stronger. Oh God, this is building our spiritual muscle. It's 
causing us to be stronger than we've ever been before. It's Jesus. causing us to be more powerful, more anointed, more, more, more wise, have more strategy. It's giving us more experience than we've ever had before. And it's giving us more hope. It's giving us more faith. And Jesus. now when we look at situations, God, we don't waver. We don't, we're, uh, we're not double-minded. We, we we're not tossed to and fro. But God, yes. we're stable in you. We have some roots in you. We have some power in you. We have some understanding of who you are and what you've called us to do. And so, Father, I pray for these, your sons and your daughters. And our declaration tonight is that, God, you're moving by your power. You're moving by your spirit, God. And you are doing even that which we did not even know that you were doing, God. You are doing amazing things in the lives of these, your sons and your daughters. Father, I'm declaring, God, that this, even this storm is pushing their roots down to such an extent, God, that the next time they go through something, God, they'll bend a little bit, but they won't even bend as far as they've been this time. Every time we're getting stronger. Every time we're getting more powerful. Every time the anointing on our lives is becoming, yes, we're becoming storm proof because we're storm warriors, God. We are called, oh, we have the Father. And Father, you've put us in camp, so God, you've called us to be storm warriors, God. We're not, we're, God, we don't become weary and well doing, God. We weather the storm and we warrior through the storm, God, because we know that you are faithful who promised, God. We know that your word cannot, will not, and shall not. It is never returned, boy, that you cannot lie because you're not a man that you should lie, neither are you the son of a man that you should repent, God. And if you said it, you're going to do it. And if you spoke it, you're going to make it good. So we can trust you. We can believe in you. We can know that you are faithful who promised, God. We can stake our lives on your word and we can stand flat footed and believe you by faith that what you said you're going to do, it's going to come to pass. We can take the check to the bank. So we bless your sons and your daughters. We pray for their faith to arise. We pray for them to get into the place, God, that you have called for them to be. And God, we declare we will not be moved. We will not retreat. We will not back up. God, we won't get tired. We will not get weary. We will not fret. We will not faint. And God, we will not fall, but we will stand and we will do what you've called us to do and we'll be all that you've called us to be and we'll do it in Jesus' name. And so tonight we bless, again, these your sons and your daughters, and we declare blessings and favor and increase upon their lives like never before. We thank you, God, that this, oh God, I keep hearing this light affliction is but for a moment, but it's working a far greater weight of glory upon their lives. You're causing them to be weighty, God. You're causing them, oh God, to be powerful. You're causing them to be able to be a weight that can weather the storms, oh God, of life and be an anchor even for others, oh God. That when people see their lives, they will know that they've been with you even as the early apostles that even though they knew that they had not gone to their schools they knew that they had been with you and so Father that's our testimony we want people to know that we've been with you we'll be like the apostle Paul God that our speech may not be very persuasive and it may not be elegant and it may not be this or that but they'll know that we've got power they'll know that when we come we change the atmosphere they will know that there is something different about us and so Father this is what we pray over these your sons and your daughters and we thank you Lord God that even even this has worked together for their good that God your strength has oh God when they were weak your strength had became perfect in them father we bless them and we declare that tonight God that their storm is passing over that their storm is yes. passing by that they can declare even as the old song was God that I can I can see uh the storm is over now come on come on no I no like more I, I feel like I can make it the storm, the storm is over now so that's your declaration no tonight days. no more crying days the storm is They're over now. The Amen. So yes. we love you guys. We're going to get out of here before yes. I get stirred and get to preaching again. <laughs> Come on, preach. and I didn't mean to preach, but uh, I just get excited and get stirred yes. about yes. the things of God. Amen. I, I hate to see. Mm. I had a spiritual son. He was talking to me tonight and he was talking about how he was in a grocery store and people were in there and they were afraid. And man, he said, you need to go back and read uh, 2 Timothy 1 and 7 when he told me, or uh, 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 1 Timothy 1 and 7, where God told, uh, Paul told Timothy, he said, God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. Absolutely. And so you got to know what the scripture says and know what God has called you to do and let that speak instead of your fear speaking. Absolutely, because what happens, and that's one of the things that I was seeing, even some of the posts and different things, you know, people will have faith, but once they hear a bad report, once they hear something negative, they, they automatically like, oh my God. And so we have to be um, walk in faith no matter what in the midst of a storm. And that's why Jesus was saying, oh, you of little faith. You, you know? know, I was laughing and I'm going to get him again because there is a certain young man on here and his, his thing is GC Hotel Logistics. And uh, I'm going to have to get him because, you know, that's Bobby, right? He come out <laughs> preach. I'm going to get you, Bobby. I see you. 
<laughs> My God. I love, love you. you Bobby. Love, love you, so you much. man. Love you. Love yes. You. But this storm, let me tell you something. Yes. I think it's, you know, it's still a little bit of rain and we got little bands, but the storm is passing over. Yes. It didn't have the authority to take us out. Absolutely. It did not have the authority to Absolutely. take us out. Are Absolutely. you listening? Absolutely. Your storm doesn't have the authority. Absolutely. I keep I don't you know who that's anchor. for. You have been anchored. And sometimes we don't understand why we have to go through certain things in life, why the trials, why? Because it it, it is causing us to be anchored. Mm -hmm. It is causing us, God is is causing us to, to be um to be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, because as you know that your labor, your giving, your serving, your prayers are not in vain vain that God hears you. He is so attentive to you. When I tell you it, it is, you know, I, um, you know, many of you know, and I, I don't publicize it as far as, you know, title, but it's the demonstration of the prophetic. And God always amazes me. I don't care where we are, whether you're in the, we're in the United States or anywhere else. The prophetic always, always amazes me because God is so attentive to us. He hears our heart's desire. We may not even speak it out of our mouth, but he hears our heart's desire. And he will answer our unspoken prayers, our unspoken requests. But even as we think on it, God is able to, to understand and to recognize the thoughts of our mind and even begin to answer those things. And so don't, don't even look to say that God is not there. He doesn't understand. God knows. He understands. He knew before. And so even in prayer, God wants it. It's not an issue that God doesn't know. But he wants us to pray to him because that that releases us from fit for from thinking that we have to do it all ourselves. Mm -hmm. it, it it really it, it allows God. It gives him the opportunity to invade the situation and give us the victory and cause us to be more than a conqueror. Amen. Well, let me give you these last few announcements. <laughs> We're getting out of here this Friday and Saturday. Uh, yeah, Friday and Saturday we will be in yes. Denver, Colorado. Of course, we know Wednesday we'll be back at our church. Uh, perfected love and we'll actually have service in the sanctuary this week uh, but then uh, this Friday and Saturday we'll be in Denver, Colorado. We're excited about Shift Colorado and uh, so excited about that and then uh, next week, well the first three days of the week will be at Reset in Lima, Peru. Amazing meeting going on there with Apostle Samuel Aboleda and then uh, the next uh, two days we'll be there at the Cast Out Conference, September 22nd through the 24th with Apostle Tracy and Prophet Allison Stallworth. Make sure you go uh, there to www.kingdomglorywa.com and that's where you should be able to register. And for more information, 850-875-5492. Apostle Ivory Hopkins is also going to be there. Yes. And then the 29th um, and the 30th will be in, um, in uh, help me out, in, at Christ Central Lake Wales in Lake Wales, Florida. Yes. Uh, that's a Friday and a Saturday for suddenly 2K17 Lake Wales. Saturday. Next month, we're headed uh, to uh, Detroit, Michigan, October 19th through the 21st. And then my wife is going to be speaking at the uh, Women's International Conference in Sarasota, October 26th through the 28th. Again, meet us every day, midday, uh, with Lejean and Valora. And uh, we love to be able to teach together, minister together. And um, somebody made a statement. They said that each of us individually were fully capable of ministering very well. But we've spoiled them by doing it together all the time. Right. And we really like doing it like ah, that. Yes, that's, uh, that's our heartbeat. Make sure you go. As she said earlier, and sign up for this webinar because yes. I have. Let me tell y'all, let me down, y'all. Let me try, let me down. <laughs> I pushed this girl to do this webinar, and then uh, no, we've had a lot of people sign up. Uh, we had overwhelming response because we only wanted a certain number of people, but we've had much more than that, and so I'm really excited. Uh, but that's starting this Thursday night, am I right? It is. So this Thursday night, it starts yeah. September 14th. Uh, September then next Thursday, September 21st, the Thursday after that, September 28th, and then October 5th. So it's going to be amazing, 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 and uh, we're getting out of here. We love you. We bless you. We honor you. We thank God for you, and we pray that you would know that your storm is it's passing over. over in Jesus' in name. Jesus Amen. Name. Bye. Love you guys. Shalom, shalom. Perfect peace.